Tonight, a resident of Oswego County is under voluntary self-quarantine. Why this person felt they needed to make this decision after traveling abroad. Wegmans continues to limit the sale of sanitary products beyond hand sanitizer. More on what will be limited at your next trip to the grocery store. And at least 48 colleges across the country cancel face-to-face -face classes as the coronavirus continues to escalate. More information on how this will affect students in Oswego County. Good evening and welcome to WTOP 10 Nightly News. I'm William Corsi. Brianna Watson. After spring break, Syracuse University will conduct all classes online until March 16th or later. This campus is just the latest among a string of closures across the country in an effort to slow down the spread of coronavirus, which has taken the lives of over 4,000 people worldwide. As spring break approaches for SUNY schools, there are now 173 cases of coronavirus in New York State, with the majority of cases in Westchester County and Long Island where Malloy College is the latest to switch to online classes effective tomorrow. Locally, SUNY Oswego officials put together a task force in an effort to educate the community about the virus and to prepare for preventative action as spring break nears. As of now, SUNY Oswego's campus will still open after spring break. However, professors in all departments are required to submit online contingency plans to administration while the task force further assesses the outbreak. We asked students on Twitter what their plan will be if classes are canceled in person and moved online. In a poll asking if SUNY Oswego cancels classes for a portion or rest of the semester on campus, and if you live off campus, will you choose to stay in Oswego or go back home? About 33% said they will be staying in Oswego, and about 68% say they will be going home. In another poll, we asked if SUNY Oswego cancels classes but leaves the dorms open. If they will choose to stay on campus, about 76% says they will go home, and the remaining 24% says they will stay in the dorms. With schools officials weighing the option for online courses, we asked students how they would feel if all classes became online. Yeah, especially since there's so many kids that come up here from like New York City and stuff, and that's where it's really affecting. So I think that it would be a really good idea to do that, just to make sure that nobody gets sick. Well, you don't get the face-to-face -face with your teachers. Tutoring would probably be harder than, it would just be, everything would kind of be harder to learn than, like, if you're in difficult classes. Some of the um, colleges back there, and actually high schools as well, are, like, closing down and stuff like that. So I think it would be a good idea to just make sure everybody's safe and stuff like that. I think it's a good shot. It could make it a little bit better to try to, like, not get it here. Uh, because especially with people going away for spring break, they're going like, to be meeting a bunch of people from different parts of the country, uh, maybe even the world, so like, there's a good shot they can bring something back uh, to school with them. And an Oswego County resident is in voluntary self-quarantine after traveling to an area affected by the coronavirus. According to the Oswego County Health Department, as well as Syracuse.com, the resident is a college student who attends school outside the county. The student does not have any symptoms of the illness and is being monitored daily by the Oswego County Health Department. The majority of New York State's coronavirus cases are linked to a cluster in Westchester County. In a press conference Tuesday, Governor Cuomo announces facilities, including schools within a one-mile radius of the outbreak's epicenter, will be closed for two weeks starting on March 12th. In a statement today, Cuomo recognizes this is a period of disruption and notes this is a public health decision over other factors. New Rochelle at this point is probably the largest cluster in the United States of these cases. And uh, it is a significant issue for. The state plans to send National Guard troops to help clean surfaces and deliver food to the area. The test results of an Onondaga County patient who was examined for the coronavirus came back negative. The patient was tested Monday morning at Krauss Hospital in Syracuse, and the samples were sent to a state lab in Albany. The patient is currently admitted to an isolated room within the emergency department to prevent any viruses from being sent elsewhere. Wegmans has begun to limit the amount of items customers are stockpiling as they prepare for the coronavirus to spread locally. The grocery chain says in order to ensure the availability of high demand items, they're limiting the list of products, including items like Clorox, Lysol, and Wegmans brand disinfecting wipes, bath tissue, and bottled water. A full list of restricted items is available on Wegmans website. The New York State plastic bag ban is in full force. 
Our Angelina Diaz talks about the impact here in Oswego. Angelina, what can you tell us? Thanks guys. New York State's plastic bag ban was implemented on March 1st and local businesses are still adjusting to the recent change. I spoke to a few of them who say this is a step in the right direction. New York State passed a law banning plastic bags on March 1st of this year. Bosco's manager, Teresa Heim, explains how the grocery business is adapting to the recent change. Just basically selling reusable bags. Um, we discontinued the plastic ones. We're doing paper bags for some people that don't have the reusable or don't want to purchase them. So people are sort of being annoyed. Tammy Canale at Thrifty Shoppers says the secondhand shop is instituting a bring your own bag policy for shoppers to reduce waste. We no longer have plastic bags. People have to bring their own or they can purchase one from our store. We have our own personal bags here for 99 cents. They're very big useful and plus we have others throughout the store that they can purchase. I don't think it has had any effect. People are pretty good about it. They either bring their bag or they buy one or they carry them out. They haven't really been upset about it. Eric Mena at Green Planet Grocery encourages customers to bring their own bags when shopping but also has some new green ideas of his own. Basically what we have done since the bag was implemented was to basically remove those single-use bags uh, we do offer paper bags, um, and if not paper, then it would be like a plant-based bio bag. New York State will not enforce fines on businesses until April 1st. For free reusable bags, you can stop by Oswego City Hall. Back to you guys at the desk. Coming up later tonight, a major cruise liner releases passengers over further coronavirus concerns. And that Florida spring break you've been planning might be out of the question, and this time it won't be because of the weather. Now let's take a quick look at the weather with Storm Team 10 meteorologist Madeline Crean. What can you tell us, Madeline? Looking at the radar, there's not much going on right now. As you can see, the rain from earlier today is clearing out heading into the evening. What caused all this rain? There was a cold front moving in, affecting much of the east coast across the nation. As we look at temperatures right now, right around average for now. However, yesterday we were well above average with temperatures in Oswego specifically 18 degrees different than it is currently. More for the weather later after this break. Meteorologist Madeline Cream. So, Madeline, tell us this. We've been experiencing some uh, lovely spring weather. Yes, we have. We've gotten a little sneak peek with uh, spring over the past week. We had some warm temperatures, and we're looking at continuing warm trend going into spring. And it's been a mild winter too, so we got lucky this year. Yeah, we actually it was like 40, 50 degrees yesterday. Yep, well above average. Oh, so t what can you tell us about the rest of the week coming up? As we're coming up into this week, it's going to continue to be warm. We're looking at the current satellite now. Not much going on. As you can see, the rain from earlier today is passing through, and it will be clearing up going into this evening. And as we look at the temperatures, there was still today's highs were still well above average in the 50s, while average are still mid-30s and low 40s for this time of the year. So why are we going warmer weather. Spring is arriving later this week, uh, March 19th, nine days at 5.58 p.m. Spring will be arriving and we are looking forward to the warm temperatures of that. So with spring arriving, uh, NOAA's six to ten day outlook is showing these warm trends along the east coast. As you can see, the dark reds are showing above average warm temperatures. So you can see along the East Coast that it is warmer than usual for this time of year. Looking at our future cast today, not much going on. There's some clouds showing in the area. Temperatures average for now. It is going to be cooling off tomorrow as you head into your morning commute. Not much going on. No need for umbrella. It's going to be clear skies. However, later in the day around noon, the clouds will be rolling in. Temperatures continue to stay cool in the area, 30s on average. 
As we head into the evening, heading home from work, temperatures continue to stay cool. Clouds will continue to stay in the area. However, overnight, as you are sleeping, the clouds will clear out. Temperatures still in the lows. Going into Thursday morning, the clouds will continue to stay away for the most part. No need to worry about rain. Clear skies, clear skies will continue throughout the day as you head into the noon time temperatures are going to increase again and then heading later we're going to see above average temperatures again with temperatures mostly in the 40s some in the 50s throughout the area which is well above for this time of season so with spring rolling around you could go ahead and get to your car wash uh, wednesday is a good time with the clear skies Thursday, do be aware that it's going to rain Friday. So if you are going to get your car washed from all that snow in the heavy winter, do it on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It is going to rain, so that would be up to you. Looking at our seven-day forecast, still cool temperatures right now in the week. It's going to continue to warm up. We're looking at some rain Friday. As we head into the weekend, it will cool off again. Clear skies continuing into next week. More, that's all for now. More weather will continue, or more news will continue after the break. Welcome back to WTOP 10 Nightly News. President Trump is now telling the Senate he wants to eliminate the payroll tax until the end of the year an $800 billion cost due to the spread of the coronavirus. Trump has suggested the tax cut would boost the economy as some experts fear the country is headed into a recession. The administration is currently heading a task force to help the economy through the recession and reassure fears. We're prepared and we're doing a great job with it and it will go away, just stay calm, it will go away. Everybody has to be vigilant and has to be careful, but be calm. President Trump is also considering using the Federal Emergency Management Agency to deliver funds to boost the economy, which would not require congressional approval. A school district employee in Memphis, Tennessee, was in contact with someone who tested positive for the novel coronavirus. The employee worked at an elementary and a middle school. Jackie Massey spoke with parents of students at the schools who say they are concerned. And don't nobody want their child to be sick. And don't nobody want to take that virus to their house. Parents with children at Treadwell Middle and Elementary Schools are not playing around. Many wiped their kids down and some even sprayed them with disinfectant spray as they took them home Monday. And I wiped my children backpack down when I got them out of school. Sure did. Gave them gloves. Sure did. Parents are doing this after they found out an employee who works at Treadwell Middle and Elementary came in contact with a person who tested positive for the coronavirus in Memphis. Some took more extreme measures. Two garbage bags. My shoes and came and loose. Two sacks. Another sack. Leaders with the Shelby County Health Department say this is not necessary because it's a very low risk situation for students. Health Director Elisa Househalter says about 70 people came in contact with a patient who has coronavirus. Those people were quarantined at home but are not considered sick. She says most of those people live in Tennessee while a few live in Mississippi. They're being asked to stay at home during the incubation period so that if they become ill, we can get them appropriate treatment. While the SES employee is quarantined, the district is focusing on making sure everything is clean. Still, family members tell me they don't want their kids in school. It's messed up. The flu killed them old folks in daily, so what's up? We're going to die in the the county says schools will remain open. The employee has not yet shown any signs of the illness. They will be quarantined for 14 days to see if they develop any symptoms. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis declared a state of emergency to help control the spread of the virus. Tourism officials worry about the impact this could have on Florida's finances, with tourism bringing in $18 billion to Miami in 2018. But not all potential visitors are deterred by the threat of the coronavirus. President Trump says the government will be help the cruise and airline industries as the coronavirus keeps travelers and profits away. This as the majority of passengers are still waiting to be let off the quarantine Grand Princess ship docked in Oakland, California following a coronavirus outbreak. 
I wish to personally thank you for your patience, understanding, and cooperation. We are going to start the next round of disembarkation at 8 a.m. Passengers on the Grand Princess cruise ship eagerly awaiting their turn to get off the ship and away from their cabins that have become their homes for the last several days. We're all in our rooms still or out on our balconies. We have plenty of fresh air. And when we leave the ship, we all be wearing masks. So I think we're pretty safe going. We're getting to where we're going to be going. The first group of passengers disembarked Monday, including those needing medical attention, some from California as well as Canadian residents. They were ushered either to the hospital, a military base or back to Canada. The remaining U.S. residents who are not from California will head to quarantine sites in Texas and Georgia. I believe from what we're understanding that once we step foot on the base, that we will be quarantined for 14 days. International travelers will make their way home on chartered flights. My parents are nervous just because of their age and because of the, my mother's asthma, but we feel very healthy and um, we're just praying that we weren't exposed. In Oakland, California, I'm Nadia Romero reporting. According to USA Today, two passengers on the ship have filed a lawsuit against Princess Cruises for negligence and not taking all necessary precautions to keep its passengers and crew safe following the spread of the coronavirus on the company's diamond Princess cruise ship last month. President Xi Jinping of China has now visited the city of Wuhan, which is the center of the coronavirus outbreak for epidemic prevention and control work. Wuhan and its province, Hubei, has since been on lockdown in order to prevent further spread of the virus. This is Jinping's first trip since the outbreak began and has declared that the situation has been stabilized. The Champions League clash between FC Barcelona and Napoli will be taking place on March 18th with no live audience. After a debate between the health department, the secretary of sports, and FC Barcelona's CEO, Oscar Grau, it was decided the match would take place in an empty stadium to help combat the spread of the coronavirus after 29 new cases were confirmed in Caletonia this past Sunday. Coming up in sports, Pat Machado, Patrick Machado. Can you give us a quick little preview? Thanks guys. Two track and field athletes are off to nationals and the coronavirus continues to impact sports across the country. Your full sports report on WQP10 Nightly News after the break. And nightly news, Patrick Machado here with your sports update. The men's lacrosse team suffered a 15-5 defeat at the hands of Clarkson. The Golden Knights held the Lakers to just one shot on goal in the first half while scoring eight unanswered goals before the break. The Lakers showed flashes in the third quarter, scoring a man-up goal, but it wouldn't be enough to overcome the lack of first-half scoring. Both teams now sit at 3-1. Oswego returns home to face St. John Fisher on Saturday. Seniors Sarah Jensen and Katarina Burke are heading to the 2020 Division III Track and Field National Championships. Both seniors are coming off record-setting seasons in the jumps category. This will be Burke's first trip to nationals and ranks 16th with her mark of 1.86 meters. Jensen returns to her second national championship and ranks 6th in her category with a mark of 5.8 meters. The meet begins Friday in North Carolina. The Buffalo Bills have exercised their option on offensive lineman Spencer Long, as well as re-signing cornerback Levi Wallace and wide receiver Robert Foster. Foster and Wallace are both exclusive free rights agents and were able to be signed at the league's minimum salary. The Bills are still looking to lock up tight end Jason Kroom, also an ERFA, but have yet to agree on a salary amount. The NFL's unrestricted free agency period starts on March 16th. Santa Clara County has banned large gatherings in response to the first corona death recorded in its borders. The ban caps public gatherings to less than 1,000 people, which includes the NHL's San Jose Sharks, the MLS's San Jose Earthquakes, and the NCAA Women's Basketball Tournament hosted by Stanford University. The NHL is discussing alternative options, which include finding a neutral site outside the affected area, game postponement, or playing at SAP Center without fans in attendance. 
Now to the hardwood with an NCAA berth is up for grabs. Storm Murphy on the break and finds Chavez Goodwin with the slam in the middle. To make it 7-11, ETSU still leads. Terriers down by seven, second half. Murphy finds Nathan Hoover with the open three to cut it down to four. But the lead is back to six and here is Murphy again. Stop, a little bit of a pivot and finds Goodwin again all alone for another slam. And now we're, and now here is Goodwin again with another slam, excuse me. And the Terriers need a desperate points here as Trey Holloway f fires a fadeaway two points. And now the Terriers need to stop with time running out. Patrick Good down to Joe Hurley who's left in front with an open free. And Tisdale will seal the deal, giving Eastern Tennessee University the conference championships in the Southern Conference and they are headed on to the national tournament. Patrick, so who is Syracuse going to be playing next? Well, UNC beat Virginia Tech in the first round of the ACC tournament tonight, 78 to 56. So they will play the Syracuse Orange tomorrow at 9 p.m. Do you think they have a chance of winning? It's always hard to count out the Syracuse time, especially when it comes down to playoffs. So we'll see tomorrow at 9. Excellent. That's very exciting. And I hope we get to see all of those players in peak condition. Well, enough about sports, you guys. Now, Madeline, tell us about the weather. What, well, what should we expect? We're looking at warm temperatures as we head into the week. Some rain on Friday. Other than that, it's looking nice, and we're getting a little sneak peek to spring coming up. Wow, so we actually might have spring, not crazy snow. No yes. Hurt. Okay. The groundhog may have been correct this year. Well, thank you so much, Madeline. That's our report for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned for Nerd Herd. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great night, everyone.